Welcome back to Home Lab Networks. My name is AJ, and my plan today is to go through the software side of things, things and the services that I run on my servers in my home lab. My network rack, I have a total of three servers plus my as of my file server. So server one is my main Minecraft server for my family. Server two at the moment is a testing server where we just test different hypervisors and applications on it. And then server three, which is my Proxmox server that you see here. This is my main machine that I run all my virtual machines and services from. So we'll go through the list of virtual machines that I run and show you guys what I use them, use them for. So in on my Proxmox server, it has an AMD Ryzen 5, 5500, which has a total of six cores and 12 threads, which is perfect for this type of setup. It's also, I've just upgraded to 34 gigs of RAM, uh, 32,000 megahertz, DDR4, and for some reason, I'm not too sure why, but Proxmox tells me it's 62, but it's 64, that's been installed. A uh, storage, so on my Proxmox server, the physical server, it has a two, ter ter two terabyte hard drive in it, and on this hard drive stores all the ISO files, on this and then I use this drive for the virtual hard drives on my virtual machines. Also linked into my storage is my Synology NAS that allows me to run backups too. First virtual machine I want to show you guys is the machine 109 which is um, Heimdall. So basically Heimdall is just a bookmarker for all your services or even book and bookmarks in your home lab. You can literally bookmark anything to the service. And it has a very nice web UI like this. And as I said, it just allows you to literally bookmark all your services. And I've got this set as my home page. So when my web browser opens up, it loads up this page. And then all my services are right there in front of me and I can pick and choose where I want to go. So that's installed in a Ubuntu Live Server virtual machine. So the first thing I'll show you guys is my proxy manager that I've set up. We'll click onto that and it loads up proxy manager. Now I've got this set up as it runs my website right here. And this just, this just runs in a virtual machine right under NG, NG N, NX proxy server virtual machine. Next, after the proxy manager, I've got my AMP server. So this is um, this is just a gaming server where you can host game servers. It's got a bunch of stuff. I haven't used it. Um, I have used it in the past, but I'm not using it right now. But you just click on create instance. You can name it whatever you want. And then you can literally select any type of game server you want to host on in your home lab. It's got a bunch of things. I do plan to use this in the future. It's just, I already had it. I had already bought the license key, so I thought I might as well spin up a virtual machine to, to have it ready to go when I need it to. On my list is, I've got a WordPress website, which is down here, virtual machine 110. And that's linked into proxy, the proxy server. So I can have a, a domain name linked to my website. So we go and click on WordPress. It loads up my website that I'm working on at the moment. Then you can set the domain name here, which is linked into the proxy manager here to my WordPress IP address. That's how that works. And this is all secure. It's got your certificate and everything. Also got running Pi-hole, so it's a network ad blocker, which is over here, and it blocks all the, doesn't block all I will say, but it blocks the majority of ads on my network. Just like for an example, speedtest.net has a lot of ads. Pi-hole does block a lot of them, but then sometimes I'll run a speed test and ads will still sneak through. I, I may not have this configured properly, but it like works when it wants sort of thing. And it does block a lot of games on, sorry, it does block a lot of ads and games on the um, iPads and iPhones. 
So really useful for the kids when they're playing games and have all, all these ads coming through. So set up a Pi-Hole server, it'll block 99% of those ads. Under Pi-Hole, I've got a Windows 11 virtual machine that I've literally just set up for testing purposes. I just, if I'm not sure of an uh, application I want to install on my main machine, I'll run it through this virtual machine just to see if it breaks it or if there's a virus or malware or just something of that nature. And then if it passes on this virtual machine, then I will install it on my main machine. But this is just recent. I've only just set this up a couple weeks ago. But um, for a virtual machine on this type of server, it runs, it does a good job. Like, it's not the fastest, but it's fast enough like for your, like your file browsing, like videos, etc. Like, it does, as you can see right now, I'm using it right now in my virtual machine. It does a pretty good job. We'll click on, we'll click on a video. And like, it, it's definitely usable for the type of hardware that I'm running. I have Linux Kali. The Kali is pretty cool as it's got, as you guys will know, it's got all your features and programs you need to learn. Um, or hacking for one and also to learn how to defend your network against hackers. So I like to spin this up and then I will also spin up a couple of other virtual machines and then learn and try to attack that virtual machine. And then vice versa that, I'll be on the other end of that, of that virtual machine being attacked and then trying to defend it. Under my Kali machine, I've also got, also got a guac guacamole remote server, which basically is just a, it's a server that lets you remote into your computers and laptops over the network. Very, very cool, very, very easy to set up. I'll just log in real quick. As you can see, these aren't all my connections. The, these are just some, but as you saw before, my I've got my AMP server, I can log in to my Kali server, proxy manager server, pile server, uptime Kuma, which I'll show you very soon, and my just any vir virtual machine I've got on my network, I can use Guacamole to remote into from any device. So we'll click on, for an example, Pi-hole. So I've set this connection up as an SSH. And as you can see, I'm in my Pi-hole server through a remote server, which is cool. And then I can run whatever I want. And it just, in that's just like being on my actual Pi-hole server on my Proxmox. It's just an easier way. And then also I'll show you Windows 10 virtual machine, remoting into my machine over the network. And then we go, there we have it. So again, if I, on any computer in, on my home network, I can, can remote into any machine and use it as and use it as I was actually on it. So I think that's pretty cool. And again, you can have guac guacamole set up in RDP, VNC, and SSH. Those are the main three I like to use. And the next up on the list is my Rust desk server. This is pretty cool. Another RDP service, so remote desktop. Um, but what's cool about this is you're running your own RDP server. So you're like, normally with RDP, you connect to your computer and you, you're going through someone else's server to get that connection. You're, you're hosting this locally, which means you've got full control over everything, which I love, and no one sees anything. So once the server side things are set up, you're going to open up Rust Desk application on your computer, and then you're going to set up a remote connection. So we'll click on this one because it's green. So these are my uh, Windows virtual virtu machines on, Pro on Proxmox. And as you can see, it's super cool. And because this is hosted locally, there is like literally no performance issues whatsoever until there's gaming involved. I've tried like even on just Minecraft and it's a bit, yeah, I've just got to work around that and make that a bit better. But very similar to Guacamole, um, Guacamole just lets you remote into literally anything on your server. This is mainly for rem remoting into computers, Rust, desk, Rust desk is. But um, if I could choose Rust Desk over, say, Windows RDP, remote desktop, I'm choosing Rust Desk. But 
then guacamole is good for just overall services. Next up on my list of services, which is, it looks like a lot, but compared to other people, it's not that much. Next up on my list is Upton Kumar, which is a network monitoring service. So we'll log in. And what I have linked to Upton Kumar is literally all, all most of my servers on Proxmox and my other servers in my home lab. And I just, so I've set it to every 30 seconds, it's gonna send a ping to my service to, to check if it's up. And if it is up, it's gonna send a 200 okay message back and just keep in contact with those services. And then if they go down, I'm gonna get no notified to say, hey, this service is down, let's fix it. So this is a really cool um, service to have in your home network. And you can literally add whatever you want to it. Give it a name, tell it, tell Uptime Kuma the IP address. And then this is where I've changed the check into 30. You can put it to whatever you want, add it, and then it shows up on the side and it's gonna start pinging it straight away. I had a couple down messages because the power went out. So that wasn't good, but it told me that it's down. What's like, what's wrong? Let's have a look. So really cool, really cool service. Now that's all the services running on my Proxmox server, my main server in my network rack. So we'll move on to server one, which is hosting Casa OS on a Linux virtual machine. And Casa is awesome. I've already got a video covering Casa, but it's got an app store. It's got a bunch of apps you can download, all run through Docker containers. It shows the system um, status, the CPU usage, your RAM usage, and the temperature of the CPU and how much RAM you're using. Um, your storage, your network, it's got everything. But I use Casa OS because I've installed Crafty on it. If I open that up, which this hosts my Minecraft server, my main one. So this is the real deal Minecraft server in my house. And it's this server's only job is to run this Minecraft server. That is it. I'll have, I've had a lot of comments saying I can literally virtualize this type of software. And that is true. And I've done that in the past. Just for a Minecraft server, I just find a bare metal server works a lot better, in my opinion. And like we also run, a, as you can see here, it's a Forge mod server. We run quite a lot of mods. So to run this on a bare metal server, works for me it may not work for you but it works for me so you you do what works for you simple as that and on server 2 i've also got got Casa os installed again and as, as i said before this is just like a testing server play around server at the moment i've got Casa installed and it's got a it's got another minecraft server running but as i said this server is just to put applications on test them break them do whatever so this this server it doesn't really have any purpose like real purpose it's just a play around, play around server and then also what else is running in my home lab is my Synology NAS this thing isn't anything special it's just one of those two bay NASs I mean it's pretty slow but um, for a file server and just backups um, it's good to have it backs up my main Proxmox server it's got a good amount of um, space. It's like all up. Um, the, the, there is four terabytes of storage. And it, I've literally, I put everything I can on this. And then it just, at the moment, is my main backup server for my Proxmox server. And then on this, I've also got file shares. So it, I can just use it on my Windows machine. So that is what I'm running in my home lab in 2025, at the end of 2025. Uh, super simple setup, but it works for me and it works for the uh, needs I need them for. And I love how this is turning out so far. If this video has helped anyone, don't forget to leave, leave it a like, consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I can't wait for what this home lab holds in the future. Thanks guys, my name is AJ and I'll catch you guys in the next video.